Hi right, guys, welcome back to the workshop. This is a uh, sort of a tutorial or an instructional video on how to install a traditional casement stay and pins to a flush casement window. So I'm working on the bench today. Uh, this window is sort of nearly finished, but part way through manufacture, so there's no glass or anything involved. Um, so I'm just going to secure it down to the bench uh, to stop it falling over. When you open the casements, it tends to unbalance the window and fall over. So uh, if you're at this stage in the build, I always just um, secure it down using a, a block to stop the clamp mark in the timber and uh, secure the window down. Um, out of the way of where you're going to be working. Okay, so we're going to fit the stay. I always fit, oh, they traditionally always fitted with the hinge end of the stay at the hinge end of the style or the casement, so that way around. I have seen people fit them this way around. Um, technically, it's not the correct way, but it is uh, slightly more secure if you. If you're looking at it from a security point of view and you've got quite a small casement so the stay will still work um, from this end of the casement and hold it open to a decent decent amount if you fit them that way around you will get a, a stronger sort of a more secure fixing for the casement in that the fact that it's held at the opening end rather than holding it at the hinge end but traditionally they're fitted this way around and that's how uh, that's how i would do it so I'm just going to put that in one corner there and measure the gap that's left. So we've got 110mm left in, uh, in gap. So I'd sort of take that at two inches either side of the stay as being your, your sort of maximum size of your stay. So if you've got a 16 inch opening there between the two frames, um, you want to be buying maximum a 12 inch stay. You don't want the stay sort of sitting tight into the corners like this and the other end tight over here, it just, it doesn't look right, it's not an aesthetically pleasing um, finish then. So a minimum two inches either side of the stay um, for sizing purposes. So we've got 110mm left, so that's a 55mm uh, gap at the side. It's up to you and the size of the casement. Um, if you've got a really wide casement, you wouldn't necessarily put it in the middle, you'd perhaps bias it more towards the hinge end. Towards the hinge end. I believe I got away with saying that. There we go, 55mm. That's where our stay is going to fit into the opening. Okay, so this is our mark here for the um, position left to right on the window for the stay. Next, we need to figure out a position in height terms of where this uh, hinge bracket needs to sit. And the best way to do that. The best way to do that is to take the two um, stay pins like this and physically put them into the holes on the stay. Now these vary from stay to stay and can sometimes be quite thick and then with a step on the pin so you can only get the actual stay to go so far down the pin. What you don't want to do is screw this on too low and then it not engage on the pins and sit up like this. So. You want to stick them in place um, to get a good idea of how high or what the minimum height is for that stay on them pins. But uh, what we're looking for is to, to sit somewhere in the middle of this pin with the stay if you can. So what I'm going to do is just lift that up, hold it on them stays, stay pins roughly in the middle move it along to my mark and then draw a little circle where my first pilot hole is going to go. Now I'm going to drill the pilot hole but uh, it's very important that you get the correct size drill bit for that pilot hole. So when we're talking correct size drill bit we're going to take the screw, um, especially if it's a traditional brass screw such as this, um, it's got to be absolutely perfect so it wants to be just, just clear the inner shank thickness of that screw. If we take this screw here and a vernier caliper, we want to get the threads, see if I can zoom in on it, we 
going to take the threads here and uh, measure between the threads as accurately as possible at some point on the screw. So we've got 2.67mm is that shank thickness of the core of the screw. So you want a pilot hole that's going to clear that and then just the threads will, uh, will dig into the wood. Now I'm not using a 2.67mm drill bit but as this is a 3.5mm body I'm going to I'm going to try a two and a half mil dr drill for a start in the uh, Akoya, um, but if it's too hard and too much pressure on the screw, I'm going to up that to a three mil. Now, because we're working into the casement by the frame, we're going to need to set the drill bit not like this in the drill. You either want some long reach drill bits, or you're going to have to set it quite far back on the uh, drill itself to give you as much uh, depth as possible. Remember, we're only drilling deep enough to set that screw. Don't go right through the case. Now, to my eye, 2.5mm isn't going to be thick enough for that, so uh, we'll try it, see how, uh, see how tight it is, but uh, I think we're going to be up into 3mm for this one. That's not too bad. Yeah, can we line that screw up nicely? Now then, a little tip for, uh, for fitting these is we can get some pressure on that screw so it holds that stay nice and firmly, but don't put the second screw in just yet. So we've got one screw in the stay, um, sitting nice halfway up then pins and uh, ready to fit the pins. Don't put the second screw in. Um, the reason for that is it'll give you some adjustment later if you need it. So to set these pins on the uh, sill of the window here, I always have a look at each individual pin because sometimes from manufacturing, you'll get one that the pin is slightly bent uh, one way or the other. Um, this is good in a way because um, the arc of putting this stay down onto the pin is actually an angle in this plane like this. So you want a pin that's got a slight bit of uh, deflection in this angle. So if you put the pin so it's the wrong way and that way around, it'll catch at the top on the far side as you try to put it onto the pin. And then as you try to lower it down, it's going to catch at the bottom on the um, shorter side. So. You've got to orientate that pin so it's uh, angled so the stay will just nicely fold down onto it. Now, I always like to have my stays so that they move out away from the window at a nice angle. Uh, depending on the depth of the what's left of the sill here, if you've got nice deep sills, it's nice to have a, a good angle on them. It just looks it looks nice. It's nicer to grab the uh, stay than if it was tight against the window. And it's also stronger because you've you've got more timber here for the screws to bite into without affecting the grooves from the draft seal. So I've got that slightly angled pin. I'm going to put it in that first hole next to the uh, hinge end. So the location of this, I'm going to judge by just gently allowing the stay to move the pin with it sat flat on the deck and uh, until this this pinhole here is in line so that that bracket is in line with the edge of the window. And then I'm going to get the plate here, so the plate of that pin dead square with the front and uh, as much towards this edge as possible, so the hinge side on the front edge, so it's square and to the hinge. And as we open it up, that uh, stay should clear the actual pin itself. So this is the fiddly bit of fitting a stay. So the easy way of getting over that is just to apply some pressure to that pin. I usually use my finger if it's, uh, if it's not too thick to get in the way. It's just the perfect tool to apply the pressure without it moving. Pop the finger on there and make sure you've got clearance there and then when it's down and in position, there's clearance on the back edge. So that can actually move over a touch. You've got nice clearance on both 
parts of the stay so it will go on and it's uh, free to move once it's down. So you're going to square that up slightly and uh, drill a pilot hole on there. So I'll just keep the pressure on and drill that while it's in place. And we'll pop that screw in place. You might want to use a hand screwdriver for putting these screws in to keep the preserve the slot um, unless you're really confident with your, your power tools. Uh, definitely don't want to use an impact driver. So you want to put that screw down so it's nice and tight so that pin can't move um, with a fairly decent force on it. It's, uh, it's solid. Um, you can get problems with these pins or the bottoms of these pins and this bracket here having a bow in it. Um, you can either bend that out before you start or you might have to put the two screws in to get it sitting exactly where it needs to but these are nice and flat along the base plates of the, of the fittings and that's going to make a difference on how the uh, stay actually works and the tightness of the fit. Um, so we've got one screw in each of them the reason for that is when we check this now um, if there's any movement between holding it and drilling it um, we can make an adjustment without having to um, plug and move any screw holes. So that's that's got a perfect fit there. So it's it clears on the way down, and it's uh, it's right in the middle of the hole um, when it wants to get some pressure on to hold the window in place. But if that stay say caught on the way down there and didn't fit onto that pin. I've now got the option of moving the pin or moving the stay depending on, on what I want to do. So if it needed to go, say the stay needed to go this way a touch, I drill this next hole in the stay to the very left of the hole um, in there, release this screw a few turns and then put that screw in first nice and tight. So it pulled the stay over, then put that screw back in, and that will just give you that tiny bit of movement, like a controlled movement, to make the fit on that stay work perfectly. As this is, is fitting pretty well as it is, um, we can move on to the other pin. We'll put them two remaining two screws in, making sure it's nice and level and uh, flat against the front of the frame here. Some of these screws aren't the best, so I'm going to have to put that one in by hand. really important that pilot hole is uh, has got enough clearance there um, especially on this this bit here you always see these split um, so you don't want any excess force pushing them grains apart because you've already got the force of the stay pulling on that pin you don't need anything else um, helping to to make that split especially if that draft seal is a groove that comes into the timber in this direction. It's a really weak point on the window. So we'll just work that screw until it sits nice and straight. Here we go. Okay, so that's them two fitted. Um, now we can fit this last pin here. So we've already lined it up so it just comes out at a nice angle just back from that uh, radius on the front of the window there and what we want is that to sit perfectly in the middle of that hole and we just want a tiny bit of spring against the sash there when it's in that when it's in its exact position it wants to close in we want just a tiny bit of spring left on it so that it will hold the position that you leave it in on the, uh, the pins itself so all I do there is put a tiny bit more than I want push the pin back so that the stay pin sits on the sill on, under its own sort of weight 
and you can see it sort of rest in there freely. Lift it out of the way, apply some pressure, and then drill the pilot hole dead in the center of where it wants to go. Again, don't drill both of them, just drill one. This pin doesn't matter so much in its orientation. You do want it leaning towards the hinge rather than away, but uh, obviously at that end of the stay, there's not as much of an arc to, uh, to deal with as there is at this uh, hinge. Pop the screw in. And then square it up. Nice little bit of pressure on the pin there. Check it. So got a nice bit of pressure on there. And uh, it's nice and square, dead in the centre of the hole. So we can drill the other hinge, uh, drill the other screw hole with the pilot bit. If that pin was out of alignment in that hole and didn't go on, again you can drill the second hole um, counteracting to, to move to that alignment. Screw that screw, oh, take this one out, screw the screw in there so it holds that position and then use that same hole. Even though it's offset, it won't pull the pin back because that first screw is holding it clamped down to the timber. Okay, so if you've got that uh, fitting right, the spring against the stay should look something like this. So it should go on without any force at all onto that pin there. And then it should, that's tight against that, that back pin there, but not going on that one. And it just needs a tiny bit more force to get it onto the pin. So there's, uh, there's friction against them pins and it will hold its position vertically. When we're done, it should look like this from the side. So there we have it. It's nicely off the surface, but holding itself nice and level along the uh, sill there, using the pressure from the pins. But it's also acting to pull that drafts, or pull the casement against the draft strip with a tiny bit of pressure once that seal is in exactly the compressed state you want it to be in. Um, so that when we release the clamp, and use the window, we'll use the casement stay to pull it in and then we use that first pin to pull the casement against the seal and then that one will apply the pressure and hold it and then we can use the casement fastener to do the final fastening of the window. Okay there we have it, one uh, casement stay fitted. Um, it's a dead simple process but there's a world of difference between doing it properly and uh, bodging it on there. Um, key points to remember uh, to get that drill bit thickness exactly right for the screws that you're using. Um, quite often they will use a different size screw for the actual stay to the pins so you want to just be aware, check all your, your components before you start. Um, get the right width stay for the opening on the window so at least 50mm or 2 inches um, either side of the stay. Um, Locate it in the centre, unless you've got a really wide casement, then you want to keep it more towards the hinge side so you get a nice opening width on your, on your casement once it's open. Um, and you've got full use of the, the opening on the window. If you keep it too far to the, um, to the open side, to the handle side of the window, your window is only going to be open sort of to this you know, it's not going to be able to fully open the window with the uh, stay at, at its maximum length. So um, you want it. You can actually check that before you start, um, just by roughly mocking it up on the window. Um, some people like to keep that perfectly at 90 degrees with that stay pin there. So that can be worked out, but it's uh, it's not essential. I'm going to be doing a video on the fastener as well. So if you're fitting a fastener along with the stay, which you would normally do on all traditional casement uh, windows, then uh, please check out the description for the link to that video as well.